Hello, and welcome to a new segment that I've decided to do, which I'm going to call the Weekly Wednesday Waffle. Uh, as you can see, I'm a sucker for alliteration. I can't help myself when I see all those W's lined up. So uh, what's the purpose of this? Well, I want to keep you updated about the various things that I'm doing and the various things that I'd like to make videos of, and basically just uh, my process of uh, um, improving my timekeeping as we go from lockdown rules to full unemployment rules. I find myself in a bit of a funny position at the moment because um, over lockdown I've been doing odd jobs here and there, like I've been uh, working in a Waitrose for Warehouse, I'm driving a van at nights, stuff like that. Um, but during normal times I would be predominantly teaching and gigging, both of which have been impossible for me over lockdown or not feasible at the very least. Anyway, the good news is that gigs are back. So I had my first official gig of the season uh, at the weekend a couple of days ago, so that was uh, that was good fun. I'm looking forward to more of that. Um, started a teaching job last week. Uh, it's just on a Monday for the time being. I do all day Mondays. Tuesdays and Thursdays I work double shifts with the waitros and the driving, so they're gone. So the only day that I really have free, because the weekend is also taken up by gigs, of course, the only day that I actually have free on any given week is on Wednesday. Um, and this is an interesting thing. I've uh, taken it upon myself to generally take Wednesdays off. Uh, the reason for that is being a musician, I don't get a traditional weekend. Um, if you were thinking about pursuing music professionally, this is what will happen to you too. There won't be a weekend because weekends are when you'll be working the most. So you have to make time for yourself at some point or other, and I've decided to do it on a Wednesday, halfway through the week, halfway between gigs. So, uh, in other words, I'm working like crazy, Monday and Tuesday, Thursday, typically Friday, and Saturday. And I have Wednesdays and sometimes Sunday off. Uh, Sunday is the only day of the week that I have off that my friends and family also have off, so, uh, you know, so I devote that time to socialising. So Wednesday is the only time I've really got at the moment to focus on doing interesting uh, original projects and making little videos like this. So that's why Wednesday. So the Wednesday weekly waffle. Right then, so aside from all the stuff that I've just outlined, uh, I've got plenty of stuff to be getting on with and I don't really have enough time to make videos about them all. Um, let me just, I've written a list on my computer over here, I'm just going to quickly uh, go through them. Um, I have uh, six uh, songs that need uh, guitar parts added. Um, that I'm doing some, doing a kind of sessiony type thing for those. So six uh, full songs and a couple of demos to write and record guitar parts for. And I would love to share my process for that, but as they're not actually my songs, um, it would be awkward <clears throat> to share the progress. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and just write and record the guitar parts. And then when the songs are released later on, I can talk about exactly what I was thinking when I came to write and record the guitar parts. That might not be for months though, because you know, th these things take time. Uh, on top of that, there's um, a, a mix I have to do for somebody. I wrote a couple of songs for them last year and um, yeah, um, I've ended up mixing them as well, which is great. I love it, but uh, it's a case of finding the time to do this mix. Again, I'm not entirely sure if I can show you the progress on this until the song is actually out. So uh, I'll do that one day, uh, hopefully. Uh, that'll be fun. I had a lot of fun writing those pieces of music. Um, next thing up, I've got uh, to mix um, sets that my band have played, my covers band. I do this for promotional purposes and to keep myself sharp so that I end up uploading, um, you know, um, around one, sometimes more, um, live videos of my band every day onto the Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube YouTube pages. Uh, this is good for social media engagement purposes, which is a good thing if you're in a band and you want to promote yourself, but it's also useful for showing clients what we sound like, because the uh, <clears throat> the mixes are very honest. They're, it's a live performance of a band, and I've tweaked it a bit to make it sound good, because the sound that you um, that goes straight into the desk is not necessarily like the optimum uh, sound. Um, you you mix the audio live so that it sounds good in the venue. That's what it's for. But what sounds good in the venue doesn't necessarily sound good uh, later on. 
like for example, if you're playing in a small venue, then the drums uh, will be very loud in comparison to the rest of the band. So in the live mix, you'll turn the drums down a little bit and you'll turn the vocals up a little bit to compensate. And then when you listen back to that later, the drums are way too quiet and the vocals are way too loud. So, uh, you know, so I am going to be tweaking the mix a little bit and uh, polishing them up, getting them sounding nice. But fundamentally, what you're getting is an honest representation of what my band sounds like live, which is a great thing for a client to hear. They know exactly what they're going to get. So uh, I try and uh, keep a steady stream of those going, of one a day. Um, so uh, I need to get on that. The way that I would do that, incidentally, is I would mix um, the, the whole gig. Like I would find levels that work for the whole gig. And then I would just render out the entire gig, cut it up into bits, and then upload the bits separately. On a typical gig, we'll play about 30 or so songs. So one gig, if we're uploading one song a day, will last for a month. So uh, we're nearing the end of the month. So in the next few days, I have to render, chop up and upload, you know, one of the latest gigs that we've done. And then that's me covered for another month. Um, yeah, it's not as much work as it sounds, but it is something that needs doing and it needs doing soon. Um, speaking of which, as well, I could do with looking at the guitar parts that I play in the covers band, revamping them, changing the tones, making things a little bit more interesting and exciting. Evidently, what I'm doing is good enough because uh, we we get crazy gigs. Like, uh, you know, we could always do with more gigs because that's what I live for. Gigs are amazing. Um, but obviously what we're doing is good enough to get a lot of gigs. So, you know, I'm not being down on myself, but you might as well aim to polish everything you do, you know, make it a, make it as good as you possibly can. So I want to spend a little bit of time on that. Um, I have an interesting gig, uh, Monday, this coming Monday, um, which is a, uh, tribute gig for David Bowie, um, for which I'll be playing guitar and singing a couple of songs. I have been practicing this sporadically over the last couple of weeks, but seeing as the gig's just a few days away, I need to be on the money for this. So uh, I need to find a little bit of time today to run those songs and just polish up little bits and pieces here and there. I've still got to remember the lyrics to one of the songs, but I'm pretty good at remembering lyrics, so I'm confident that's going to be fine. Um, on that same gig, we're doing a cover of I'm Afraid of Americans uh, by David Bowie featuring um, Trent Reznor, Nine Inch Nails. Um, and it's very electronic. There's live band elements. Like if you know anything about Nine Inch Nails, you know there's a combination of uh, electronic and live band elements. So obviously we have the band, you know, the band have the live elements covered. That's fine. But the electronic elements uh, don't exist yet. So um, Matt, the bassist, is having a crack at doing that, and I've decided I'll have a crack at doing that as well. And at some point over the next couple of days, we're going to reconvene and compare what we've come up with and, um, you know, pick and choose the best bits from both, I suppose, into one awesome backing track for us to play along to. So today I'd like to spend a little bit of time working on that backing track. Um, speaking of the live band, um, the mixing desk that I use allows me to record the gig multi-track and then play the gig back through the uh, mixing desk, which means I can mix the live sound of the band afterwards get it all sounding nice and everything. And then that will cut down on sound check time next time around, because I'll have uh, a certain amount of confidence that the sound is already going to be good going in. Um, so I need to spend a little bit of time doing that as well. Um, on top of that, at the, um, the other day, we're having a rehearsal for the Bowie gig that I mentioned. And uh, during a little bit of downtime, we played an impromptu cover of Newborn by Muse, which is uh, you know, a good song and everything. And I still kind of remember how to play it. It's in drop D. I had my Floyd Rose on, so I couldn't do the drop D part, but it was close enough. It was fun. But then we got to the guitar solo, and the guitar solo is just this fast tremolo picked thing on one string with a bunch of different notes. And uh, uh, I was uh, embarrassingly bad at the uh, tremolo picking. And it's interesting because I used to be pretty good at it. Um, tremolo picking was one of the first guitar techniques that I probably learned. and. Uh, you know, um, Muse were one of the bands that inspired me to do that, along with Radiohead and some others. Um, and I found a technique which worked for me. If I recall what it was, I would hold the plectrum kind of sideways and like wiggle my whole arm from the elbow, which was effective for short bursts, but it's probably not so good for my elbow joint. So it struck me that I could do with spending a little bit of time 
practicing just tremolo picking on one string, do a few minutes a day, and just see how even I can get my tremolo picking over the course of like, let's say a week or so, and then maybe documenting that process. Maybe I could tell you uh, what I'm thinking, what I'm adjusting, what it is that I'm doing to get an effective technique. And then you can see the progress that I'd make over the course of a week or so. Um, I don't wanna to be too big headed about this. Practice takes time. But um, from where I am now, I believe I could get the basis of an effective tremolo picking technique in a week. I think it would take me a month or more to really master it. But I think in a week I could get something pretty good. So, uh, you know, perhaps at the end of the week, I could use that tremolo picking to do a cover of a song which features tremolo picking um, prominently. Um, I suppose that would be something like Mizzaloo by Dick Dale and the Deltones. That'd be a, a nice, simple one as, in terms of an accompaniment because it's all about the lead guitar. Maybe Muse Sunburn, that's got some nice vocals in it, or Muse Newborn. A newborn would be a good one because it has this uh, amazing uh, bass line um, in it. And it's not that it's, you know, the, the music theory behind it is pretty basic and everything, and the part itself is not especially difficult. But what it is, is it's just incredibly consistent. That's the thing with um, with Chris, the bassist from uh, Muse. It's not so much that the parts are hard, it's that he just has just an unbelievable level of control. Everything is just so smooth and silky and fat. Like, every hit is just absolutely uh, on the money, like every uh, every note that he picks. So, um, yeah, so Newborn will be an interesting one to cover to learn the bass part for the verse, but I suspect it would take me longer to learn to do that on bass than it would to learn to tremolo pick. So perhaps that could be an ongoing little project for me. One day I'll cover Newborn once I've learned how to do the, uh, do the bass like, uh, like Chris does. Uh, you know, there's a good chance that that will never happen. Yeah, he's an amazing bassist. Anyway, yeah, so quick recap, right. I have these six recordings, uh, songs to write guitar parts for. I've got the uh, the mix for the song which I wrote. I've got to write guitar parts for a couple of demos for somebody. I've got to mix uh, the latest live set from the band. I've got to look at the guitar parts and the tones and the helix settings I'm using for my covers band live. I've got to learn and practice a bunch of Bowie tunes for Monday. I have to create a backing track for I'm Afraid of Americans. I want to learn how to tremolo pick. Um, and I want to mix the live tracks off of my desk so that the next Colors gig sounds good. And uh, the only day I have to do all of these things is today. Uh, so uh, that's gonna be interesting. Um, there's a couple of things I could put off until later on. Um, I think writing and recording the guitar parts and doing the mix for the song that I wrote, that can be put off. The Bowie thing is important, the I'm Afraid of American things is important. The revamping the parts and tones for the covers band, that's an ongoing thing. It doesn't need doing right now, but I should spend a little bit of time on it right now. Mix needs doing right now, tremolo picking is ongoing. Um, and the live tracks off desk, that's kind of ongoing, but I could spend a bit of time on it now. Anyway, look, I've waffled on long enough. I am hoping that uh, I can reconvene again next Wednesday and the list of things that need doing will be a little bit shorter and I could spend a little bit more time perhaps making videos to show you how I do all of this stuff rather than just talking about it. I'm just too busy at the moment to do anything else. But I figured despite being busy, the least I could do is just to uh, keep you updated on what's going on and uh, what to expect from the channel in the future. Anyway, I hope this was of some value to you. I've, I highly doubt that it is, but it's a little glimpse into the life of a working musician. So take that to the bank, whatever you want to do with it. I don't know. Anyway, I've been Phil, signing off. See you next time.